Welcome back guys to After the Bell. In this episode, join me as I sit down with Nolan, a former top 4 contestant on Taste Master SA, who is also a qualified chef living in London right now. Together, we delve into the profound role of food in our lives, exploring how it serves as a catalyst for connection within communities and evokes cherished memories from our childhoods. From the warmth of family gatherings to the vibrant tapestry of cultural celebrations. Nolan shares insightful anecdotes and reflections on the transformative power of food beyond mere sustenance. Join us as we embark on a flavorful journey through the heartwarming intersections of food, nostalgia, and human connection. Okay, Nolan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Dilan. So, uh with uh, getting you here, I don't really watch a lot of uh, you know, uh, let's say food reality shows yeah. because and I, t- I say this a lot weirdly as much as I do eat I'm not really a fan of food in that way in the the decadent style in the in the competition style but I yeah. do like watching it being done so last year I went back to South Africa my mother will have it on on YouTube and taste master essay yes stuff like that every now and again as I'm walking past sitting down <laughs> not really totally paying attention but i realize how important food actually is in terms of not just nutrition and stuff but you know bringing communities together and you know before we go down that rabbit hole i just want you to tell me what got you into that whole uh, uh that whole idea of uh, food being a part of you know who you are there's one story that i always remember uh and i think it goes back to when i was in grade 3 Um my mom always tells a story and it's uh one about me saying that I wanted to be a chef like Jamie Oliver. Okay. <laughs> and uh when people asked me when I was younger, you know what do you want to be when you when you when you grow up? Yeah. It was kind of like I want to be a chef, I want to be a farmer. It wasn't oh, really okay. one of those oh doctor lawyer the traditional, teacher, the traditional. Yeah, right. And um I think you know our Indian community as well back yeah. in South Africa we are pushed towards becoming a doctor, a lawyer, yeah. a teacher or one of those jobs that have a degree. They kind of like uh, they box you in into yeah, the Yeah, they put you into a box. And uh I think when I got to high school, um my parents realized, okay, this boy has the brains <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to make it into university and uh to study further. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I also realized that. And I said, you know, okay, uh I want to go to university and I started off studying medicine at Wits after high school. Right. But meanwhile in high school um I used to be part of the catering club. Oh okay. <laughs> so I would leave physics yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to go and help out in the catering club for functions at the, the school. Teachers will be listening to this now. <laughs> yeah, my teachers are going to be listening to this now. Uh, not bunking necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have bunked because my mom was teaching in the school. So right. um yeah, I used to leave physics class to go and help out in the catering club to make sandwiches and bake muffins for the teachers. Okay. So that's how it started off and uh I used to take to baking and cooking at home. Both my mom and dad cook and they're very good cooks as well. Um So you have like uh people to impress kind of yeah, with your food. Yeah, people to impress with my food and I was always open to trying out new recipes at home as well. Yeah. And after my first year of university, I spent a lot of my time cooking. Um after res um after after lectures and stuff like that. Right. and uh, so my, you you got into medical school yeah i got into medical school medical school and uh, i uh, enjoyed it i enjoyed the practical part of it i enjoyed the theory yeah but it wasn't really something that i could see myself going into uh, okay. in future my uncle is a doctor or was a doctor my grand was a nurse uh, so okay. i had family in the medical profession oh so you do okay right and you had I, a point of reference i had a point of reference yeah. and i managed to go on a job shadow with my uncle. Yeah, yeah. And I went in and I saw how he operates in the surgery, um how things go on in theater. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so I had that full on experience. Yeah, like yeah, full uh, hands-on kind of. Full yeah. hands-on experience changing dressings while uh operation is going on, helping them Damn. pass things. Um I saw the Was it like of, an eye opener for you? It was. It definitely was an eye opener for me. Uh going into theater not being the one who's being operated on, uh, but to watch how everything happens and uh Whoa. I just I realized okay it's not really something that I want to do because in the blink of an eye you can lose a patient and yeah. I watched how that broke down my uncle back then um and I think so it you was took just it personally I took it personally I mean 
I remember it's a very sad story, but I remember one day where he he was a, such a good doctor, but he could do nothing for his dad. Wow! And he had to basically pull the plug on his dad. Really? Um, that's that's like one of the stories that's really um, was a pivotal moment in my career change. Okay, and that makes a lot of sense. Actually. Yeah, it took a lot of um, a lot of like courage from me to go up to my parents, and I thank my wife now. Um, she helped me to build up that <laughs> courage because she kept saying to me, oh, no, you need to tell them. You need to tell them this is not what you want to do. Tell them what you want to do. I found the school, Jackie Cameron School of Food and Wine. It was the closest one to home. So the, you did your own research? I did my own now. research. Uh, and funny enough, I wasn't looking for myself. I was looking for my wife's sister at the time. Oh, okay. She wanted to be a chef and uh, we were looking for chef schools for her around South Africa. Right. Yeah, and... Uh, I saw Jackie Cameron School of Food and Wine and I really liked it. And it was close to home. It was a 15-minute drive from home. So, so it was like, it, it ticked all the boxes. It ticked basically. all the boxes and it was 100% job placement. That's what caught me. Because at that time, you know, you're young, you just want money. You yeah, want yeah, yeah, a yeah. salary. <laughs> you want to start uh, being independent. Yeah. Um, and I think from all the shows that I watched, I, I on the other hand, love all the reality <laughs> chef cooking shows and stuff like that. Love watching Gordon Ramsay and Kitchen Night. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay, I think the, the way he's, he like swears at people was one of the selling points Yeah, one of the selling points, <laughs> 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, his arrogance, but also his know-how. And um, I think these days when I sit with uh, my wife and I, we watch like shows, even with mom and dad. Yeah. And uh, when I was leading up to the Taste Master, I used to watch with my family at home. And before something could happen, I would say to them, they need to do this in order to fix it. And they would oh. get a shock when like a judge or something would come past and say, you need the to do this. Same thing. So it was, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing that kind right. of stuff. Yeah. So when you said, and I always like when you get into guests uh, with things like this, like, you know, the, the deeper questions on you as a person, you know. Yeah. So you said you were in medical school. And as you said, we all know, I mean, kids have been telling me this all the time. I want to be a doctor, I want to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. Because we know the status behind it mm -hmm. and they know the, the monetary value behind it. Definitely. Yeah. So when you say you didn't see yourself like this, what exactly um, may, gave you that uh, type of realization where you're like, I really can't see myself long term in something like this. I can't see myself wearing the scrubs every day and being in theatre or whatever. You know, the hours um, in... Uh as a, as a doctor in hospital life, um, you don't have much time with your family. You can earn all the money in the world, I feel. But if you don't have the time to spend with your family, that money can't buy back the time that you would That's have lost. That's true, yeah. Um, and I realized that COVID came and we lost so many loved ones during that time. Yeah, especially and, that time. And especially during that time, we lost so many loved ones. And no amount of money that we had could fix what, what was broken. You know, it couldn't buy back that time yeah. with those loved ones. And I think that was just a pivotal moment in my whole thought process in thinking that it's not about I, chasing I the money. Yeah. I can't be chasing. Yeah, I can't be here. It's not where I need to be right now. And you also need to realize that you need to get that satisfaction within yourself. You need to be happy doing whatever you yeah. want to do. Yeah. Uh, you need to come home with a smile and wanting to wake up to go and do it. Um, and I think that's important. That's so very important. So being a, a part of the, the culinary world gives you that feeling. Oh, definitely. Um, it's not a bed of roses either. Yeah. I mean, being a chef is very difficult. You which I've heard. Yeah. It's long hours. It's high we stress environment. Very high stress environment. We work 16 hours a day wow. uh, on our feet all the time. But it's the passion. It's the drive behind it. It's the adrenaline lush that you get every night when you go home. And... Um, there's a lot of pros and cons to being a chef. Yeah, but yeah. you look at the pros because you want to see the positives, you know. And if it's really what you love doing, you will wake up every morning wanting to be in that kitchen and get at it. And you'll have the passion to complete that 16-hour shift. And, you know, I think the environment is like... We always tell ourselves, like, we're soldiers, we're soldiers. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> you motivate yourself. Yeah, you have the... to motivate yourself. And yeah. you have to build yourself up emotionally and mentally because as much as you need to be physically strong for it um, moving enjoy, about the entire yeah. moving about yeah. the whole day that 16 hour on your feet you get like an hour to just sit down and relax before service sometimes maybe not even an hour wow. maybe like half an hour or like 20 minutes to have one meal a day um, 
And we we were cooking all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you basically go home to eat toast. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not a bed of roses, but in the end of the day, I love what I do, and I get that full satisfaction um, from working and seeing people happy all the time. Right. And I think I see. me being a social person, I definitely wanted to do a job the way I am working with people okay. all the time. Yeah. Um I felt like with as being a doctor, I could help people more. Yeah. But and I could make a difference to their life, you know, like curing someone or saving someone or making them better could make a difference on their life and yeah. how they live. But also that's a huge responsibility. Yeah, it's a huge responsibility. Yeah. And being a chef as well, you, one wrong move and I promise you, you can also kill somebody. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, you can kill more than one person. <laughs> you can kill true. that whole restaurant. Yeah. So, um, and I think the satisfaction of watching people leave when they come back and they say, thank you so much for that meal. It was delicious. It was amazing. Okay. You know, that whole satisfaction of it and hearing, okay, that I've made a difference in someone's life. Right. You know, you building that memory because a lot of our memories are based around when we share a meal together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you can think of many times when you're at home uh, when your mom cooks something, yeah, and you remember that certain a uh, memory from that the, the smell of it, the feeling, and the things the that smell, we said, yeah, the feeling. Like uh, my mother still sometimes when I was uh, living in uh, in Durban would try and tell me to come home for because she made chicken curry because she yes. always used to make that for me and you know I'd associate those type of memories with that food. Oh, definitely. You yeah. know, so even with my uh, grandmother, living a little about uh, twenty or thirty minutes away, so I grew up mostly there like my early childhood days and every monday was like sugar beans and roti <laughs> sugar you beans know? and roti and that's monday. that was the thing and yeah. you grew up with uh, with that all the time and you associate those uh, times you spent and lived with that food yes definitely and um i think it's been one of the um best part of moving to london yeah. is when i cook i feel close to home because of that missing home. So when I cook my sugar beans and, <laughs> and roti on a Monday, yeah. I've done it before. Oh, okay. I had a sugar beans and roti bani chow. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yo, this this makes me feel so much better. It I does. I really missing home. And yeah. I mean, the weather here is sometimes yeah, it's really not the, depressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the best. Uh, so it's just wonderful how that one simple meal, yeah. something so simple. You need those uh, moments of uh, like connectedness. It just yeah. connects us all. That's yeah. true. And, you know, uh, looking again with child, what was that one meal for you um, that made you have those, like if you think about it now, it gives you those, that feeling like, uh, you know, of your childhood in, in a good way, the, the positive feeling. There's one that I always think about. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know fish curry and kali. I, I did hear, yeah. So like a really nice tamarind chutney mm-hmm. fish curry. Mm. And kali is like soft milli meal porridge. Okay, right, then I did. Um, my grand would always cook that and she would hand feed me. So that's one memory <laughs> oh, that's that goes in your back. Head. <laughs> so there was no bones or anything and everything was just perfectly portioned yeah, out. Yeah, right, okay. Um, yeah, that's one meal. And I, I must being hand fed by her, you know, that <laughs> we always take those things for granted. True. Yeah, and it's that memory for me, the smell, the taste, the texture. And it takes me, I can like... So all your senses picture, are engaged, uh, yeah. All my senses are engaged and I can I can think about exactly where she was sitting and where we were and what we were listening to at that point. Lotus FM. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah. Um, back in yeah, the memory taking banks. Back, yeah. Taking me back, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's the power, I guess. And again, I'll, we don't always think about food being uh, that strong of a medium to connect us all because it's there and we have to eat it. Yeah. But when you reframe it, into uh, letting it be a part of your life in a central way, where, uh, like you said, now you remember those feelings and you, now you even remember the sounds of on Lord is a fair man. That's a strong emotion to have, you know, it, it, it gives you that. And uh, you seem to me like a very uh, ambitious person I because uh, I just realized now that you're a lot younger than I am. <laughs> and, you know, you made the move to come here to, to the UK and uh, not, not only that, before that you pushed yourself to be on this reality show, which is not easy in itself. Yeah. A lot of people don't really like being on camera. I don't like speaking. And it's not easy. Those things are difficult. We're not born with that. Yeah. But what pushed you to say that, okay, I'm going to go on the show. I'm going to apply. Um, so before, previously, bef- before the Tastemaster competition, yeah. I um, entered a competition called the Excella Young Chef competition of 2021. And I had won that one. Okay. So it was wow. the Excella Young Chef of the Year. 2021 and it was uh, by the same company right um 
Espresso Morning Show. Uh, that's a sister company with the Taste Master essay. Okay. Um, and I gained the confidence to enter that first one uh, by just speaking to my wife and my my mom and them, and saying to them, "I'm just gonna enter this one and yeah. see. I, I don't <laughs> think I'll get picked. I'm not sure if I'll get picked, but it was my personality that uh, that caught their eye. Okay. And I think um, I did a lot of drama in school as well. My mom yeah. is a drama teacher. Okay. <laughs> so I did drama in school as an extra subject. I was really that outgoing. Um, <laughs> yeah, enough energy for all that. Yeah. And, also an overachiever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it can be a downside at times. Yeah. <laughs> um, just being an overachiever, but most of the time it pays off for me. And uh, being ambitious. Um, and when the Taste Master opportunity came across, I grabbed it both hands. Um, I had the taste of being on TV before. I had that taste of being behind yeah, the camera. Yeah. And what and, it feels um, like. I know, I knew what it was, what it felt like. And I, I already set in my mind that, okay, this is something I like. And in the future, I would love to have a TV show of my own. You know, uh, one that I can say, like share our recipes or share oh, okay, okay. our personal recipes, yeah, of yeah, my yeah. family recipes, like my grand's fish yeah, curry. Like curry. Thing, yeah. Maybe it will create a new memory for someone else out there. That's Maybe true. there's a young Indian boy somewhere watching around the world yeah, yeah, you who's never know. going to <laughs> change their career or uh, is now motivated to go in the kitchen and cook and exactly. cooking makes me independent as yeah. well you know um i look at some of my cousins and um, some of my friends back at home uh, they've moved out of home obviously yeah. they're in university and some of them can't cook still and i'll tell them it's, it's the real so thing. easy <laughs> come on man you can just go and fry an egg it's so easy don't stop buying takeout <laughs> Stop buying those frozen meals. Are these meals. people in their 20s? Yes, those people are in their 20s. Yeah, they need to... Uh... I don't mean to throw shade. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's yeah. reality. I mean, yeah. you give me your perspective of that, but that's true. A yeah. lot of uh, so young simple. men yeah. can't cook. And young women these days. Young women, yeah. Uh, and I think it's it's a survival skill. You need to know yeah. how to cook. Uh, and it's not about making things like fine dining. No. And baking. <laughs> baking is also a science, but it's not about... It's just the bare minimum. Do the basics, you yeah. know? Like, know how to braise a, a set curry. Yeah. Like, yeah. know how to roast something in the oven without burning it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the heat set, the correct yeah, heat the settings heat, and the stuff. The correct heat setting. And I think, like, social media these days is something that... There's a lot of things. Wow. Like any yeah. recipe just dumbs it down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like they, they make it, like, for cooking for dummies, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's so simple. <laughs> I, sometimes I wonder, yo, do people actually know how to switch on the stove? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> do they know they have to press down and then yeah. ta-ta-ta? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> <what it's> <laughs> <laughs> do they do they try? Yeah, because I, I can cook, right? But I'm gonna be honest, I don't like cooking. Yeah, I feel like it takes. I always tell my wife this: it takes too much of time for so less food. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going to yeah. spend two hours in the kitchen. Uh, she likes cooking, so that actually kind of helped both of us out in that way. Yeah, mm. it's it's a uh, it's a labor of love. I guess. I guess it is. Yeah, I guess yeah, it is. Cooking is definitely because it can take forever. And it you does. You can get out the small, like it. The other day, like um, last week, Saturday, for example, we yeah. did this new dish at work. Um, it's pigtails. So something I never thought I'd say yeah. I ate before in my life, <laughs> pigtail. When they came in, they looked atrocious. But as the process went on, it took the whole day to prep up. Wow. We boiled them three times. Really? So first, you cure, cure them like with salt and you leave them for like about 15 minutes to half an hour. And then you put them in a pot and boil them. And three times you have to remove the water, boil them again. So, so it takes that a, is a long day. Process. It's a long process. And thereafter, then you cut at each joint section and then you blanch them at 140 mm. degrees Celsius for like 10 minutes. And that blanching process is so long. And then Oof. on service again, you deep fry them. So it's that long process for something so small and so quick that just goes in your mouth and it's done already. Yeah, that's so it's definitely... <laughs> already like, you give me... Uh... <laughs> you think about it... Um, a lot of the recipes we use, they take forever, like souving for almost 72 hours. And like, 72 hours? It, yeah, we have a, Damn. there's a beef tongue recipe. This I is have, from the prep until cooked? Yeah, prep until, no, that's like just prepping. So wow. 72 hours sous vide is like dropping it into a hot water bath at like a set temperature. Yeah. That uh, doesn't get regulated. So it stays at that set temperature. And um, 
It's basically in there for 72 hours. So it's cooking for that entire time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And it's really tender. I mean, that's how you get oh, that really okay, tender okay. meat and that really tender cut. So they, they, obviously, there's there's reasons for, for it taking yeah, that long. There's I mean. reasons for it. So like I said, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Because it, it really is. I mean, uh, for even entering the competition that you did and being in the top four, how, what was that process like for you? That, that it, the experience, let's put it that way. It was a wonderful experience, I tell you. It was just the people that I met, um, the people that I got to um, engage with, the people I got to bake with, the judges themselves, the even the people behind the camera. I mean, like, what wonderful people that I met. And the experience itself, just being there and being on TV and that joy, the excitement. People mm. randomly meeting me in the supermarket and saying, hey, yeah. I know you. <laughs> You're the guy from the TV. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, it was a very sad um, ordeal as well. I was very broken when I reached top four and I didn't make it yeah. to the finale. I at least wanted to be in the finale and I thought, you know, I would be in the finale. Um, and I thought I, I had what it, what it takes to win that competition. But um, besides that, it was a really good opportunity as it opened up more doors in okay. my life like being on there I mean today we're uh, it's a podcast because you know me from the TV yeah show. yeah well um, true I even my job now in London they knew me from Taste Mask because of okay. my my involvement on social media and uh, yeah I think being on so the show a lot more opportunities a lot, of, lot more opportunities and um, I opened up to to being there and to letting my story be heard as well, because I wanted young uh, young people to to hear my story and be inspired, to not stay in that box, you know. Yeah. I wanted them to to be out there, to go and follow your passion, follow your dreams. Don't just get a degree and then sit at home and do content creation thereafter. <laughs> if you want to do content happens. creation, go for it first step. Yeah. You know, you don't always have to have that backup to fall onto. Uh, sometimes it's good to fall, so then you wake yourself up and you exactly. can pick yourself up on the off the floor. It's not always you have the opportunity for mom and dad to pick you up. You have to pick yourself up. Um, yeah, and I always say like age doesn't quantify experience, and that's my motto. And it doesn't mean that I'm younger; that I have less experience than you. Exactly. Uh, I might be in a low position. I might get paid <laughs> less than you, but I might have experience in something that you don't have as yeah, exactly that's exactly um, true yeah and the way i've kind of like structured myself is i wanted to have a taste of every part of the industry i went into catering at first mm. uh catering was a very different ball game from okay. being in a restaurant and i went into a restaurant and i saw it's a you, totally like, you had all the experiences of, of the food industry yeah and i went into a bakery as well so okay. i had those three oh. those like main three catering bakery and a restaurant yeah and a fine dining restaurant at that in johannesburg and oh yes i managed to see okay this is the way that i want to go and which way was more lucrative and uh, also to grow myself where do i see myself in the next 10 years so you had like so, so you had a, a long term plan as well as a short term yeah, plan. Yeah, I did, I did, and uh, I think that's also something that um, pushed me towards doing the competition because I felt like I had the experience, um, but not necessarily like to say that I know it all. I'm okay. always willing to learn, and so it's a journey. It's something that you have to be open to, especially if you're working in a kitchen. But I think people everywhere should also. Bear, bear it in mind is that you should never stop learning something until the day you die. Um, you shouldn't go a day without, without learning something. Without learning. Because then it's a waste that's of That's true, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's how I look at it because uh, they always say like, you know, if you don't use something, you lose it. Yeah, And true. that's the reality because if you are uh, not reading all the time or even like consuming content when you're learning something new, a new language, yes. a new skill then you're kind of like wasting the fact that you have this, uh, you know, this mental, you know, faculties that can do all these things. Yeah, definitely. And like what you were saying with the changing of careers, and this is one of the reasons why I have the podcast and have people like you to to tell others that, yeah, you can. If you, if people have, or let's say society has put you on this track t- to know that you uh, are intelligent in terms of academics, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean you have to stay there. Yes. You know, that can be a foundation and you can move on to something that you truly like because you proved it now to your parents and yes. everyone else yes. that you really like being a chef mm. in, in a restaurant and so on, you know. So that that's what I feel is uh, more important because we can all say like we love to do something, 
But when you're there and then there's challenges, do you really love it or was it something just looking like you know, the grass is always greener kind of situation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I feel like uh, that helps in terms of, yeah, I can, I can be a chef. I can uh, know now from here that there's other doors that will open because once you enter the new industry, there's so many other things out there. Definitely. But if you don't take the, the leap, you'll never know. Yeah, that's, it was definitely a leap of faith Yeah. Um, to go on and and to become a chef because i mean it's also long hours it's less pay and uh you really think about the toxic environments that you're going into i mean i've worked in toxic environments i've had that um part of of being challenged mentally and mm. emotionally in a kitchen yeah. and uh it's not necessarily for the faint hearted um but it's not to say that other people mustn't try, you know. Be brave, be bold, and go out there and try yeah. something new. So toxic, as in toxic workplace, in uh, workplace politics and stuff like that. Politics, um, personality clashes. Oh, okay. Um, I think also some get in the environment. That's true. Uh, also, you're working long hours together, and you in each other's face all the time. With the same people. Too. With the same people. So it can get a bit much. Mm. And you also get that um, some people with superiority, they want to be better. Oh, okay, better Better than you and so on. Um, But it's something you just need to be headstrong with. You need to have a good support structure. Yeah. And I think um, even here, being being in London, I'm sure with your wife here, um, she's your support structure. Yeah, definitely. And it's been easier than moving across alone exactly <laughs> um, because when you're at home you have your parents you have your uncles your aunties your grandparents there's more support structures more support structures um and it's so important to come across here and i found myself battling at first yeah uh, because i had no support structure and uh, when people are far away from from home it can be difficult but yeah and it can be difficult to also start afresh i mean i'm sure you know how difficult yeah. it was to start afresh here in a new <laughs> Two, country <three> times. <laughs> yeah so um, yeah, definitely and it, sometimes like i was talking to uh, i'm not sure if you've seen the episode of Ivana that had uh, she's yes, from yeah, south africa yeah. too uh she's also like starting started a career afresh coming here yeah. to a new country and you wonder to yourself, did I do the right thing? Should I have just stayed back? <laughs> I wonder that all the time. <laughs> and it's not only I don't think myself. it goes away. Yeah, it doesn't go away. And the worst, I just feel it worse. I went home in January. Yeah. And I just felt it worse when I got back here. I was like, <laughs> oh, I miss the sun. I miss, yeah. I miss home. I miss the convenience of everything back at home. Uh, being able to drive. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah because anyway, th- that's a big part too, even yeah. for me. Definitely. I mean, like walking and jumping to public transport, it's not the same. And some people on these public transport, um, they're very different people and you can't (laughs) just react like how you would normally react back at home. True. Um, It's a whole experience on another level. It's different and that's why like with with our our mentality now, you know, keeping our mental faculties to ourselves, how do you manage to? Because I'm sure there's being young and you and a chef, there's high anxiety. Even yeah. with me, there's high anxiety because yeah, you know, it's a whole new, different ball game being in a new country. Uh, then we got, you know, seasonal depression. Yes. You're dealing with that. So how did you manage to, uh, let's, let's start with anxiety. How do you manage to control that? Because that's like a, probably a, a daily basis thing. Yeah. My anxiety, definitely. Um, you see, being in the kitchen, we deal with deadlines all the time. It's not like, Oh, I can come back and finish this one tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay. Or I, I can see. take this home with me and finish it at home. Yeah. It's it's right now, right here. I need it now. Um, no matter if you're tired. No matter or if anything. you're tired. No matter if you're having something going on at home. No matter if uh, something has happened at home, the geezer has burst. Or even back at home, you're worrying about your mom and dad who are sick. Right. It's You have to block all of that out and... That anxiety that builds up because you have that one service and you're expecting 60 people to come in and you know, okay, do I have enough? Do I have enough? You know, so there's a lot going it's on. It's a lot going on and that anxiety does build up often inside of me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I look forward to weekends but also dread them because they're opposite times and that anxiety okay. builds up. But I find how I manage personally to deal with my anxiety is mm. I speak to my wife. Okay. In that one hour that I get a break, I manage to speak to her. And then I do a little bit of a breathing exercise. Um, I grew up in a very spiritual home. Okay. Uh, with the, like my parents are very spiritual. So 
it does also come down to my breathing exercises and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, we do like pranayama, which is just practicing your. Oh, you Hindu? Yes, I'm oh, yes, Hindu. I see. So um, we do like practicing your breathing, just like just to calm myself. To calm me down. Um, and then I organize myself. So I organize my thoughts. Like in your mind. All, organize my thoughts in my mind. What's my priorities? Uh, what can wait until later? Okay. Um, also, just having a good prep list at work just yeah. also manages to minimize anxiety uh, on my behalf. Um, sounds uh, sounds quite practical, but sounds very helpful. Yeah, it is. It's, it is very helpful. Um, and I always say, like, one thing that we discuss amongst work, and like, I only recently realized this was... Um, that our job compared to others, it's mentally, physically, and emotionally draining. Um, compared to working at an office, right? You're sitting behind a computer and you're sitting and you're typing and you're using your brain and you're mentally yeah, 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 going yeah. at it, you know? It's mental exhaustion. Mental exhaustion, true. Uh, then you get physical jobs like manual labor. Manual labor. Okay, they manually working. Some of them don't have to use their head that much. Not at all, sometimes, uh, yeah. And then they physically exhausted. They get home, mm. and they go and relax. And then you get some people who are mentally exhausted, like uh, emotionally exhausted. Mm. Like, uh, A therapist uh, therapists and Therapists so and stuff yeah. like that. They're listening to people's problems yeah. most of the day. And then they have to deal with their own. And you don't really True. get that chance to vent because... They just switch off, really. Yeah, yeah. to switch off. Um and then we have to deal with it in the kitchen. We basically deal with all three because you're yeah. on your feet. You're mentally exhausted from using your head. Or like I mean, it's a lot uh, that I that I thought you have to I categorize have to things. Be, yeah, actually, physically to, make something. Physically, you have to use your common sense a lot. Yeah, as well yeah, in yeah, the kitchen. yeah. If you're not using it, like you can really get behind. <laughs> um, so there's a lot about uh, basically composing yourself in a way that you can carry out the next task yeah, because you can really spin around like a headless chicken at times and if you don't have control of your anxiety a lot of chefs take it the wrong way and they mm-hmm. lean towards drugs that's why they lean oh, towards they actually, drugs because, because of that reason because it calms their nerves right um, it kind of like sets you back it calms their nerves and they manage to actually makes you like a machine kind of Switches off the okay. emotions. Okay, so you, instead of dealing with it internally... Yeah, they y- seem to... They numb it externally. Yeah, they numb, numb it externally. And I guess... Um, I actually had no idea that it was uh, w- kind of like widespread in, in that industry. I never would have thought... It is, it is very... And I, I mean, I don't need, mean to out anybody for it. Um, I think it's quite an open thing. Because when I got in, when I was going into the industry, my father said to me, uh, look, are you sure you want to? Because... I heard things about this industry, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, it's very, very tough. There's a lot of drugs. Anybody will tell you. Even Gordon Ramsay himself will tell you that there oh, is a wow. problem with drugs and alcohol in the industry. I mean, um, and we turn to drinking often because of the long nights and then okay, just okay, to I see. numb yeah. it all out in, mm. in the end of it. I mean, Instead of thinking about, uh, you know, I have to go home now. I have about three hours left and you might as well just... It's kind of like a reward as well, you know. Look That's at true. Like that. yeah. yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh. Mm. You've worked over oh, 16 hour shift. I reward myself now by having okay. a nice ice cold beer. And the fact that it's so there, it's like an, a convenient reward. Yeah, it's a convenient reward, definitely. Oh. Oh, wow. That actually helps because I, I know a lot of people that are in those toxic work environments. Um, not just toxic because the people around them are bad, but also toxic because of the, the type of work they're doing and the long hours and stuff. And and I know for sure that they don't know how to get out of it. They don't know how to think outside of their uh, point of view from where they are because they are currently in it. Yeah. You know, like it's being like being the in the eye of the storm. Yes, definitely. You know, everything is swirling around you. You are in it, but you can't get yourself off to look that, yes, it'll, it can be better and stuff like that. Definitely, yeah. So those uh, techniques or mechanisms where you organize your thoughts, calm yourself down, uh, will be helpful, I guess. Yeah, um... Uh, like I said before as well, having a good support structure is, yeah. so, is so important because if you have someone who you can rely on who's not only going to give you advice but just someone to listen to, to listen. you, you always need that person just to listen or even de-stressing. Um, I find that helps a lot uh, on my off days instead of like um, just lying in bed or just watching movies and stuff. I de-stress. So if that's okay. your way to de-stress. To reset, your, actually. To reset. Yeah. You know, like taking a walk in the park and just enjoying nature and just 
you know, appreciating what you have in the moment. Okay, the gratitude. Um, yeah, you have to set your mindset as well uh, to deal with the mental problems, you know, those those issues that we deal with on a daily basis. That we can't really uh, change. You can't really change. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't stress about something that's not in your control. That's true, yeah. Um, It's just there, I the guess. The seasonal, you were talking about seasonal, seasonal depression. depression. Yeah. When you move to London, it's a total... Uh, yeah, that's really when we were the first time to it. So it's like, because we used to, I mean, South Africa having warm, firstly warm weather, even if it's grey, it's yes, warm. Yes, yes. And secondly, we do see the sun often enough. Yes, but here you're not. You don't. And you're lacking vitamin D. Uh, you're not getting that, uh, though that feeling of when the sun is out. How you normally feel, like you know, yeah, there's a, there's many hours left to the day, and now the sun is setting at like half past three, four o'clock. Yeah. It's it's much takes much earlier toll on compared body. to yeah. And then you're also trying to adjust to the time because back at home they're probably one hour, two hours. Exactly. Yeah. And now, um, when the, when the weather is dull, I feel like everyone's mood goes dull as well. Everyone That's true. Just yeah becomes blue and uh, also then you find people are more aggressive <laughs> yeah yeah but when the sun is shining and everyone's happy everyone's smiling and you feel like you want to be outside there was even a, a study that was done um, this the show was on netflix it took uh, a water sample from uh, the thames river yes and they tested it for antidepressants how much would have been in there yeah. and there was quite a high percentage sure. that we noticed that was in the river Itself. Because of how much people use these antidepressants yeah. in countries like this, because there's hardly any sun. It's really something that can get depressing. Exactly. But I find like the way to move forward or a way to kind of um, push yourself out of it is having bright colors around you, uh, because we tend to go towards the darker colors. More neutral. Uh, more and, neutral. Yeah. Do you think black is slick? You know, um, and like. The simple thing is having a shower curtain. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a different, like, a yeah, fun color, yeah. you know, or having multicolors. Can something also, like around you in your yeah, eye, something, eye line. Uh, for example, like having an umbrella that's different colors, like a yellow umbrella, or having a yellow coat on, it just kind of brightens That makes up. sense, yeah. It can also, like, I, I don't, I'm not sure of how it works, but I know that colors have uh, such yeah, an effect on you. Color theory, yeah. Yeah, color theory. Like my dad will always say to me, uh, if you're having like a foot, but of a chest cold, you'll say, uh, blue. Wear like, no, no, like wear like red to warm the oh, chest. Oh, to wear it. And I never like really understood that. Oh, like if you're going out at night, don't wear black, wear white. I guess because that's of reflection and stuff like that. But. Um, yeah, color does help a yeah, lot. Color does yeah. have help mm. a lot. You know, like having like these yellow couches, they mm-hmm. bright, they make the room look exactly really good. stand out. They stand yeah. out and they kind of have that warmness to it. Exactly. So you have to like just sh- surround yourself with those kind of warm you know, things. Even when, uh, in terms of marketing, you know those infomercials we used to watch when growing up. Yes. Also, so we had no choice. Uh, everything in the infomercial, down to the color shirt the guy is wearing, is thought about in yes. terms of what, how. And how things are going to be sold. Yeah. That's how color theory actually. Yeah. That's how much of power color has. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it is a real thing. Yeah. I think that's one way to go forward from the seasonal depression that yeah. we have here in London. That few days that you do get the sun, be outside. <laughs> be outside. I try to be outside <laughs> as much as we can because it can get a bit much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. And only recently I found that you're standing in the sun like... In these months, you get warmed up. Yes. But if it's like December, the sun is out. You don't really feel you any don't heat feel from any the sun. Heat from it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it's so icy cold outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to have. The sun has no room. chance. <laughs> Doesn't have a chance at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's nice to hear from your point of view because uh, from a different industry that yeah, we know for so. sure, like uh, the chef industry or the the restaurant industry is very high, uh, fast paced type of thing. We always hear, you know, that bell being rung and then the yeah. food is out. And from Take our point of view, that's what it looks like. Yes, yes. I only can imagine what it is at the back. And for you to say like, uh, you know, just get a support structure or, or someone that you can talk to. Um, try and organize your thoughts, the priorities, the front of the list and everything else afterwards. Uh, that's a good, because I, I used to do that, you know, when I was... Uh, in the school, in, in the school system and stuff like that because you can't do everything all at once. You've got kids that are waiting there for you at 35, 40 of them. And yeah, you, so you you can't, uh, let's say you have tons of marketing to do. You know you need, need to do it now, yes. but also you can't do it now because you have to be there doing this. So you have to like prioritize things because yes. I know a lot of people, 
get very overwhelmed with the things that they have to do. But I think a little bit prioritizing, kind of like, okay, I'll mark these later. So even if you sit now and you've got five minutes free, yeah. don't take it and mark it because you already put it in the plan to mark it later. Yes, yes. You know? So looking at your time as, uh, time is valuable yes. all the time to us, no matter what we uh, say about it. The more you prioritize your time, the lesser things are so busy in your head. That's what I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah, if you prioritize it, kind of actually just saves your sanity. Of it. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. So you're not yeah. um, wondering what next, what next. Um, yeah. You're not like just haphazardly doing things. Yeah, like that, that's a brilliant example, actually. Like saying, okay, my marking isn't my priority right now. Yeah. I need to put it later. Uh, and I saw that like with my mom, but, you know, she she's a to, teacher. She used to have marking but you bring it home and maybe finish it at home because she knows okay i'll have the time exactly to sit after supper yeah and uh i can do my marking while you're doing your homework you know so yeah it's it's always so good you prioritize to, and it, i think that's what also kept uh you know mental sanity yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah driving because also i can imagine being with the kids the whole day uh as that's lovely like the ter- as they the therapist are thing yeah, because you get drained you get drained yeah, yeah you do get drained i guess and it's uh, very taxing on you, on your yeah. mental health and your, or even your physical well-being because I'm sure you're on your feet as well. You were like standing around standing walking. Standing around Because walking. see, with, with dealing with kids, it's not, I uh, think maybe people people don't realize when they, obviously not a teacher, like you know first and your, your, your mom is a teacher. Yeah. But it's more than just standing there and teaching the content. That's like, Definitely. you ask any teacher, they'll tell you that's the easiest part in the world to do, teaching the content, helping them, marking, seeing if they got things like that's the easiest part. The difficult part comes when you have other administration tasks to do. Yes. And then the kid is asking you something. Then the kid tells you they have a problem at home. Uh, then their friend is fighting with them. They want to go to the... Cho- There's all things all happening things at once. At once, yeah. Three of them raising their hands. Who do you see? To? So a lot of like fast decisions have to be made by teachers in the classroom. Yes. And that's why teachers get so exhausted, I guess. I think parents also don't realize that that what's going on in the, in, the, in, in schools. They think, uh, I'm just dropping off my child at school. Uh, it's like, I'm leaving them for a few hours there. They have to learn whatever. The teacher's job is just to teach them. Exactly. But teachers have to go for external moderation. Yeah, there's a lot. To, yeah. There's a lot of paperwork between um, your head, your HODs. There's a lot. And your... Um, the principal the and principal, so on. The principal, yeah. the deputy principals. A lot of repetition, a lot, lot of, of yeah. admin behind it. It's way too much. In fact, it, sure, that's yeah. one of the big problems. Yeah, that's one of the big dealing problems. With, yeah. Dealing with, sure. So you're also like prioritizing and making sure you have less than organization is very, 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 very big part of it. Like teacher productivity should be an, on the top of every school management's uh, to-do list. Yeah. Teacher productivity, yeah. not, you know, giving them, assigning them tasks and expecting it to be done. Yeah. But how, do the, how does a teacher prioritize the tasks that they have now? Yeah. We know standing in the front and teaching the children are, is the first priority. But marking the papers are the second one. Dealing with them uh, because they are they, the vulnerable uh, part of society. How can we just... You, they're telling us that something is wrong. How can we just like brush them aside to do the administration? Mm-hmm. That's why we teach it, so That's that true. we can help them, you know? That's true. And I'm sure your, your mom kind of went through and is probably still going through those type of things. You have to deal with different personalities as well. Yeah. All, <laughs> all of those different... Exactly. People all in one classroom, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot, it's a and they're coming with their uh, yeah. uh, problems from home, and it's like spreading throughout the classroom. Man. Definitely. And talking about school, what type of uh, kid would you you say you were in primary school? <sighs> primary school. I was excited about primary school first. Tough one because I have to think back. <laughs> way back. <laughs> it's not that long ago, but it's long. Um, like, were you like the, the reader or the, you know, no. the one that did all the homework or, you know, well, no. how would you categorize yourself? <laughs> I, I know. I was, I think I was kind of naughty in primary school. Okay. I didn't really take it that serious. I was, uh, I used to take the things that shouldn't be taken serious, serious. You know, like the things like market day. Oh, sports, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the extracurricular day, ones. The extra, extracurricular. <laughs> uh, I would say that I used to read. But I used to read only because uh, we used to get stickers at the end of the day if you finished the so book. So the, the, the reward system. The reward system would work. Uh, and also just to make sure I read more books than my friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't even, I wasn't even the sporty type. I, I didn't do that much sport. Um, but you I like was, those type of events. I, I, I enjoyed those type of events. I enjoyed like being creative, um, getting my, my, um, my peers to 
what kind of kid like i can't tell you to be honest with you through um grade 1 to and you thinking about whether you're going to have a girlfriend those that was me <laughs> whether you're going to have a girlfriend and gossiping with your friends um the priorities were different the priorities <laughs> were very different and then i think when i got to grade 6 grade 7 then i started being ma- a bit more mature and then i realized okay i need to do well so i get into well, this is the age school. of prefect uh, yeah, choosing and now. you want to be a prefect <laughs> head prefect you want to be the responsible one yeah yeah you yeah do your all your homework excel in school and then i started realizing okay i can't actually do well and then we started having first in the class first in the grade um and then i started pushing myself and okay i realized oh i have the potential to do this extra lessons after oh school. okay so you realize um, you're capable Amisa, a lot more yeah we used to have i realized much later um i guess grade 1 grade through to grade 1 through 4 yeah. you're not really focused on your school work it's like oh i'm just here to play games with my friends yeah 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 uh, and eat my lunch <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when you get to grade 5 through to grade 7 that's when you actually pay attention now and it's about which high school you want to go into so so the serious the uh, serious part came part out came out and i want to be a prefect i want to go into leadership okay um i did see myself as a natural born leader uh, when i was younger okay um yeah i would always take to leadership roles um Although in my school they didn't offer that prefect that head boy head girl kind of Oh okay situation. they didn't do it that way. Uh we didn't do it that way. We always it was something about senior leaders uh, in primary school and then high school was uh um I forget the word. Uh like uh we are also no prefects. We weren't yeah, called yeah, prefects. Yeah yeah yeah. Mentors. Was it mentors? Yeah, we were called mentors or something. Yeah. yeah. It was a odd one. It was actually an odd one. Yeah, they changed word, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wording it compared to a uh, prefect. Um, but yeah, I took up to leadership roles throughout high school and primary school. Um, class monitor. And oh, stuff that's... Like that. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed doing those kind of things and being the teacher's pet. I think I that was my role. Yeah, yeah, being yeah. Being the teacher's pet because I'll always be a... <laughs> because your mom was a teacher too. <laughs> my mom so. was a teacher, so I knew how to... How to win the teachers nice over. The <laughs> yeah. Uh, when it's the teachers' birthdays, I used to remember all of those kind of things, you know. Uh, big sale. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I was kind of the teacher. I guess it means just like uh, being in school was something I had to do. Yeah. And I used my, the fact that I had like a little bit of natural intelligence. Like, I know I'll pass, uh, you know, one of yeah. my friends, uh, you know, in, for my wedding, for our wedding, he said this in the speech. He said, he remembered me saying this in school. uh you know don't put too much of emphasis on school because whatever the past it is you, you adapt to it and you pass adapt to it, yes. and i did say that and i realized damn i actually i knew that i could have done more but i was like i was okay just like passing Complacent. the line you know Definitely. yeah in a way yeah. and it's only when i met my wife and we were in university together that she was like you know what you actually can do better than uh, than this and i said i know i can yeah, yeah. so when she I did put a little bit of effort and you know that's when I started getting some merits and you know uh, that's good. top of the class and stuff but I don't know in school I never saw the the point of it you never saw your potential I I don't know if it, it maybe that's what it was it always takes someone else to see your uh, to I guess show so. you your yeah. potential yeah that's true and I guess um that's the support structure yeah, matters that's a lot the support structure also matters like yeah now for you your wife showed you that you have yeah, yeah. so back then and just use it yeah and use it yeah I'm you wasting, know, you're wasting it you're wasting it <laughs> <laughs> going to school to eat your lunch I always get to <laughs> get told that but <laughs> <laughs> oh, really yeah i used to always get told but um i think high school was a different ball game altogether for me yeah. um especially with my mom being in the school it wasn't always easy uh Not oh, in terms okay, of okay. I had to get in tr- getting into yeah, trouble yeah, yeah. or stuff like that. I could I could uh, I had a very free reign. I think she left me to have a very free reign, but um I think in my year we struggled because there were three teachers children all in the same class. Really? Yeah, it was a really odd actually and then in, in, always it ended up being in grade 10 we ended up being four teachers children in the same class Whoa. and all four were top top achievers, four top She was, so it was so very we difficult. Four. It was very difficult, and it was that kind of like animosity between the teachers and their children. Oh, okay. And it, it got very kind of created yeah, that way. Yeah, created that really uh, bad animosity yeah. in the school, and it was especially because we would get scholarships. So your top three students would get scholarships, and that's when I started pushing myself because now. Oh, okay, you, okay, okay. There's monetary uh, value. There's monetary what? value. Yeah. Uh, if I get a scholarship, then they don't have to pay my school fees. Okay. 
then they can use that money for something else. That's how I afforded, like, my parents afforded to send me overseas when I had opportunities oh, okay, to do okay. that. You know? Do you like- you know, I pushed myself in high school, I guess, um, because I saw the value of it. Uh, my, my brother was also an older. Uh, he finished four years ahead of me. And when I was in grade eight, he was uh, in matric. And um, in his matric year, he uh, was awarded the best all-rounder of the school. Okay. And he was also a top achiever. My brother was very intelligent. He is still very intelligent. Yeah, he's yeah. a very academic. He's a very academic. Compared to me, I think he can sit down and study properly. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, whereas me, I was kind of like you when yeah. you were in school. I I would know like, okay. I can I do don't, it. I listen yeah. in class and then I know, okay, I've done well. Yeah. I can write the test without having to study the night before. Basically, yeah. Basically from going off what I heard in class. Yeah. Um, yes, yes, we were the same. I that, right? wouldn't have to sit and study like, and go over and do examples all the yeah. time. I think it was only with Chick I kind of figured out. I kind of like that part though. That yeah. we have that ability I to do that. I enjoyed it. I was like, yeah. oh, I can test myself. It's okay, easy. let's see whether I can do it today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and see what I... And they wouldn't believe me. Some people wouldn't believe me. Like if I told my friends, I don't study for this test. But I, yeah, I got 90%. And yeah, like, yeah. How yeah, we exactly. studied and we yeah. didn't even get, you know. I like, get that. Uh, it was just that natural, natural intelligence. Yeah, natural. And, uh, I think I take advantage of it sometimes. Yeah, you tend to, uh, tend to do that. When I got to matric, um, I wanted a best, better pass because I wanted to get into university. Right. Um, I would be very laxy. I was very laxy, Davy. Yeah, yeah when same. I came to studying, um, I would bluff them. <laughs> my mom, if they're watching, <laughs> I would bluff them that I was using my laptop uh, for extra material and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But I would busy be watching Kitchen Nightmares, <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares and Hotel Hell, and uh, I watched the all Hotel, the seasons uh, Gordon of Ramsay. Gordon, Gordon Ramsay yeah. and uh, Master Chef Australia. I watched all of the seasons, <laughs> binge watched them until like for my finals. I used to watch them until like eleven o'clock. Yeah. Then eleven o'clock. Can you just bring my, the mic up a little, little closer? Eleven o'clock. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Then at 11 o'clock, my brother and I would take a break because he would be studying in his room and I would be in, the, oh, in my okay. room. Yeah, right. We would take a break at 11 o'clock and we would meet in the kitchen for our <laughs> midnight <laughs> snack, <laughs> make our hot chocolate and reheat food so that we could eat again after supper, <laughs> uh, go back to study. And um, after watching all of my programs, <laughs> then, then I would actually sit, start. okay, now it's 12 o'clock, let me start studying. And then I would give it a good push. And then the next day would be my paper. And then I would study, I'd come home and sleep again after writing. So you had your, so you had your, your own secret I system. I had my own secret system, but it worked <laughs> for me. And I feel like if I hadn't done it, I would have done better because I would have spent more time on uh, studying. <laughs> but I would just basically do a quick revision, slap to the textbook. Yeah, and you, just you know you, you're going to go through it. Yeah, you, you kind of trust yourself. And um, mm. if there's any matric people, pupils listening, uh, my biggest like advice to you is that there's a system behind how they set papers. Yeah. And if you do past papers, like for me, I found that there was a pattern in how they would answer, ask questions. Mm. So uh, I actually predicted for my geography paper the year. Oh, you did I geography. Wrote, I did geography. I teach geography. Um, you teach geography. Mm. Oh, I love geography. <laughs> was my favorite subject in <laughs> high school. My father loves geography, and I, I do as well. Um, I did eight subjects in high school. I oh, did okay. drama as an extra. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I did, so. Uh, so I did the full science, bio, physics, and jog. And I okay. did uh, drama as an extra. And um, for the geography paper, I predicted that they were going to put Peter Marsberg, my hometown, oh, right. as the map. The map. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For paper two. And it's, it actually did. <laughs> it actually did. It showed <laughs> up. And I was like so impressed with myself. I said, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> and I looked at my teacher when she came and I said, you see, I told you, ma'am, I told you. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was it was really, you have to go in and uh, I found the pattern in how they ask questions. You know, they, they ask the same questions. In, it is. Or they might like skip it this year and ask it next yeah, year. Yeah, that, So that's if true. you do all of those past papers, I realized, I'd practice the past paper once and then I'd be like, okay, I kind of like, it's also revision for yourself. Yeah, that's true. So um, I think that's how I kind of use it at work as well. Yeah. Like if I know 
last week was we had this 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 it was like payday last week and or last month was pay like payday weekend yeah. it was really busy then i know okay it's kind of like a patch this is how it works then if i do like two times recipe or four times recipe okay, it's going to work okay. out enough for me right, so I like see. it's also working out the patterns that's paid off like something that yeah, yeah self awareness i guess yeah awareness in my mind that mm, okay mm. if i do this times three uh this week because it's payday this weekend then i know we're going to have enough um, that's basically how it works now yeah, that yeah. also like helps my yeah. anxiety uh okay you know in a weird way because um i know that i have safeguarded myself yeah, right right into, uh, so there's nothing to worry about in that particular yeah, sense yeah 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 uh, weird enough <laughs> yeah it kind of helps because yeah you work at the patterns and you know okay i kind of know what's going to happen yes, there so there's yeah. no unknown anymore yes there's no unknown because you can always a uh, predict and like just go through the possibilities of what's going to happen you know? yeah exactly so it makes you feel a little bit better inside definitely <laughs> definitely yeah yeah it's interesting to hear like how we were in school and stuff because uh maybe people may not think that who you are as an adult has something to do with you uh being in primary school or high school as a child you know yeah. but it does it does because i can look back now and say i could have used uh my potential a bit more on what i had and the natural intelligence as i said but now i know as an adult i'll never take it for granted again yes i'll use it any opportunity that comes through i'll i'll make use of it because i know what i did in the past that i wasn't using it Definitely. so it kind of helps you yes. and you will know in that way to like the fact that you were uh, watching all those uh, master chef thing gordon ramsay stuff gordon that ramsay. i do really want to be in the this you know this kitchen scene and the food scene uh I'll keep the degree as a as a backup. backup you you yeah. kind of know because it's the you know they say the call is coming from inside the house because you know <laughs> you know that this is what you want to do and the outside noise people can tell you get this degree or study this and look at your cousin there and yes, you can exactly. hear all that but <laughs> also you know when you visualize yourself that's the way I see myself. Okay, and did I you go through myself. that when you were visualizing? I definitely did. Um I think from a young age I knew from watching like uh Gordon Ramsay, Jamie mm-hmm. Oliver, those are the two chefs I remembered. Uh Yes, I am actually. Yeah. Uh that from like when we were growing up, uh I we didn't have DSTV and stuff. So like watching them on on SABC channels, yeah. you know, um those are the two chefs that I remember more especially in primary school. Um Nigella. Nigella Lawson, yeah. yeah. Uh the last the um a uh, person has the podcast Nada. She uh, actually was an architect and she yeah. owns a bakery in London. She did a, a cake or two for Nigella. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh which bakery is it? It's uh you find on Instagram it's uh Nada's Little London Bakery. Okay, I'm going to find it. Yeah. Well, I'll send you the yeah, so sure, you'll see. Thank yeah. Thank you. Um I love looking at little bakeries and stuff like that. It's always that's also something yeah. that that boosts your morale. <laughs> that for me personally, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I if I go and treat myself out to a nice oh, cupcake yeah. or something. Oh yeah. That's a dopamine. Uh, yeah, yeah, dopamine. Yeah, dopamine. Hit. Yeah, dose up. Um uh when when I was in primary school, um I kind of saw myself wanting to be on TV. Okay. So I it was only recently that I started pushing myself and seeing that I could actually do it. I saw it as an opportunity. I mean, right. the the people that I met during Taste Master doesn't mean that my doors are closed with them, you mm-hmm. know. Um I can't always say that okay, I want to go back into it. And if I push myself, I'm now I see myself getting experience, okay, putting my true. name out there, yeah. working in London. Like when you if I have to go back to South Africa, it's no longer the chef who worked in London. That's true. Do you know? You have it um, under your belt. and i always look at chef zola zola nene uh when she started off in the industry she started off an espresso show um okay pretty much before that i personally i didn't know who she was and i don't think many people knew her in south africa yeah, yeah, from yeah. the industry uh but it's her story is she worked in london for a year oh, okay so i'm like i think about that and i think about how i'm getting experience now in this present time yeah uh, but i still have my end goal in mind uh i see myself i want to be a, on a reality show or i want to have my own cooking show i want to publish my book i have my book ideas all set up i mean so you have these plans have these, these robust plans, plans and, that you want to carry out and i think out. there's something that when i was younger like in primary school i had those ideas yeah and i just boxed them away and put them away when i got to high school 
Yeah, uh, Canada high school is like sometimes can be a very dark place, can be too comfortable. Yeah, definitely. You know, so yeah, those plans so that you have, you kind of don't want to tell anyone because what if they say something? You don't want anyone to you know. You don't want you anyone to judge you. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. You also in that adolescent stage where you don't want, uh, where your friends are very judgmental. Yeah. And if you say That's something uh, out of, or if you don't seem like you're the intelligent one or you don't seem like you're the sporty one, um, it's kind of like a problem. Or you exactly. Like odd, you can't odd. talk about your future. I want to be here when everyone else is just like, you're doing whatever in the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. People will be saying, oh, I want to own this car, but you don't want to really, fancy, I don't really fancy cars. I would well, love, same with me. I would yeah. say, I'd love to own a restaurant and they're like, oh, a restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Why would you want to do that? And then obviously dampers the mood. It dampers and, yeah. your, yeah, your thought towards it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And, um, yeah, think back to primary school. I, I said I wanted to have my co- own cookbook because like, if we went into exclusive books with my mom yeah. on the weekends, I would go straight to those those books, I would like gravitate towards them. Right. Whereas my brother would go towards the science books. Okay, and I think okay. my mom saw that. And when I went to them and told them, this is what I wanted to they do. Also, it kind of also put two and two together. Yeah. And that's why they were, I appreciate them so much for being so supportive. Yeah. Uh, it's not always that you get that opportunity. That's true. That's true. 100%. I had like firsthand experience. I went back to my primary school and I spoke to them for uh, their career day. Okay. The last grade, just before I could come to London. And uh, my teachers, uh, one of my teachers saw me uh, after Tastemaster and she contacted my okay. mom and she said, can you please tell Nolan to come through for career day? I think it would be nice to hear mm-hmm. from a, mm-hmm. someone who's other than a scientist, a doctor, or a lawyer or accountant. And I was so surprised. These kids dressed up in their, what they wanted to be. And all I saw was just white lab coats with really? stethoscopes <laughs> and... Uh, all the lawyers just up in their smart suits. Okay, okay. Then, <laughs> one or Different two one of category. them. <laughs> yeah, all their categories. Yeah. And I said, I actually never saw one student wearing a chef uniform. And I, I remember my day, yeah. I had, we had like three of us who wore chef uniforms. Oh, okay. So that's kind of changed now. Yeah, it's really changed. Now it's more towards the science. And I, um, I managed to witness one of the... Uh, lecturers from yeah. UKZN who was speaking before me. Oh, right. So I witnessed his his talk and stuff like that. So what, what was his talk like, more leaning toward? He brought a PowerPoint presentation and uh, he was explaining to them about the laws, the different uh, Newton's laws, and he was explaining to them. <laughs> very um, boring very for bo- the primary school kids. They were so engaged and I couldn't what understand it. And I was like, you and these they were just kids scared. are asking, they're shooting <laughs> their heads up to answer these questions and they know all these difficult questions that stuff I only knew in high school. So right. maybe they're all just pushed maybe towards they geared it. Maybe they Okay, that's they a good point. Towards yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But it's also coming down to the us as young uh, adults, uh, whether we're also pushing that onto our kids. That's true. I mean, um, I would now... Um, push my kids, leave them to do kind of what they want to do because I know what I went through. So it, you it helped you in that way. It helped me in that yeah. way. But then I think about uh, my older cousins, my older friends, my brother's older friends mm-hmm. who are now getting married and having kids of their own and how they're raising their kids, um, what jobs they are doing and what they see their kids want being in the end of the day. Because I think something in South Africa that our parents push us towards is get a good job, and get out the country. Basically. Leave South Africa yeah. and go elsewhere to see the world. And then you when know? you're ready, you come back. But the grass is not always greener on the other side. That's true you too. You know, I appreciate the life that we had in South Africa. Yeah, a yeah, lot. 100%. And you realize that only once you've come over. Because... <laughs> you do appreciate it a lot more. You appreciate more. it a lot. Yeah. The convenience of everything, you know? Yeah, the convenience. yeah, exactly. I mean, last week Sunday, my dad uh, and my mom took a drive. Just because they wanted to take a drive. Yeah. And I'm like... I sat, I sat and I thought to myself, I'm in London, I really can't do that here. Can yeah. I? Not yet. I mean, not, <laughs> not yet. Not yet anyway, yeah. But it's the small things that we used to do when I was younger that I appreciate now. And I wish I had appreciated then. Because do we used to go for take, those, yeah. take those, just a lazy drive on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and just go to maybe a new restaurant around the block or... Uh, even taking the dogs for a walk, I miss having my dogs here in London. I mean, oh, we can get yes. one, but the rental, yeah, that's whole other <laughs> the story. rental yeah. department here in London compared to it's home insane. is another. <laughs> <laughs> when you start doing the the calculations, the conversions, the conversions, stay away from the conversions. <laughs> stay away from yeah. the conversions because they will throw you off. Yeah, definitely, I mean, yeah. Uh, when I think you won't about be living it, otherwise. You won't be living when I think about how much I pay for my single room now in a shared house yeah. I could be paying off a bond <laughs> yeah, well, back that's at true. home uh, yeah. um, 
And a lot of people, when I went back home for my wedding, uh, where they were asking me all these questions, I said to them, I earn enough to pay off a bond in South Africa. But Way more. The room that I have right now is so small. Um, is, they talk about that uh, in New York and London. They always talk about how expensive, expensive uh, property is. Living expenses are. Living That's just expensive. what it is. Like, for example, something small as a coffee. coffee. This is like almost four pounds. So that's four. Like that's a hundred rand. Some, yeah, exactly. That's a hundred rand. But if I think about it in rands, I, I will never buy it. You would never buy it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I think I was back in South Africa when the craze was going on with Prime. You remember? Oh, the yes, Prime yes, hydration Prime. Yeah, drink? Yeah, 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 yeah. And everyone was like, it's 40 something rand. It's so expensive. Yeah. And these kids are going out and they're buying it. Was it, it. Five, wasn't it like 500? They no, no, it started off at 500 and then yeah, the price yeah. dropped when checkers started selling our, we it. We were here, it was like, 12, 13 pounds I saw it for somewhere around there. It started off very expensive. Yeah. And then I think Checkers launched it and they you were did a bit uh, yeah. cheaper. They were like 40 Because rand. there was a YouTuber behind it, KSI. Yes, so, yes, yes. I mean, naturally. So the price started off really high and we were like, oh, you can't pay so much. But here I go into the store and I pay two pounds for a Coke. That's what I did before. For a can of Coke. Yeah. <laughs> if we do the conversion, that's like 50 rand. Exactly. You'd never pay that much for a can Never. Of Coke. Never. Not even on an airplane would you pay that much. Sometimes you think about it, like even when you're in South Africa and you're like, hey, I can get a can of Coke for 15 Rand. Yeah. Never will you get something like that here. <laughs> but that being said, um, I don't think everything is that expensive. No, it's not. It, uh, there's, it varies, it actually. Varies. It like, does vary. The the variety we have in the supermarkets here. Yeah. You go into Little, Little is very cheap when it comes to vegetables. Like, I, I've now, like, I worked it out. I actually go to Little. I think I shouldn't make a trip. Uh, you should make a trip. I went uh, about two weeks ago for the first time. Yeah, I, yeah. I compared to, like, Asda, compared to Sainsbury, oh, compared right. to I don't Tesco. I like Sainsbury. Uh, yeah, like, you find... I found out that certain places have certain things cheaper. Oh, okay. That's true, so it's, actually. It's yeah, that yeah, shopping yeah. around kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And I think also Rivana also speaks about that shopping around. She does. She does yeah. give good insight to that. Um, because, like, I went to Little and I looked at the vegetable prices much cheaper than anywhere oh, else. Oh, is it? Uh, even their bakery goods, like a loaf of bread here yeah. compared to it's almost two else. pounds. It's almost two pounds. You can yeah. pay two pounds for a loaf of bread. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. a normal white loaf in Little was 41 pound, pence. Oh, okay. Well, so that's like, a big difference. That's a huge difference. Yeah. Like you can pay two pounds for a loaf of bread in Sainsbury or you can, in Tesco. That's the price. That's yeah. the price. Or you can shop around and go to Little. And oh, okay, okay. I actually didn't know that. And, I mean, like the quality itself is, doesn't really change that yeah. much. It's your Albany loaf. <laughs> yeah, my wife likes to do all that looking at our shopping for me. If it's there, I'll take it. Mm. I got a bad habit. Uh, I don't even look for the discount, honestly. No, don't really I, just, look. I just take it. Uh, it I depends like on the thing, like maybe. That. Yeah, it depends, it, on, the it thing. depends on the product, I guess. Mm. But yeah, there's a lot of things. Like, you go on Amazon and shop here. Yeah. You get a lot of things that, like, for example, the camera equipment, mics, a lot cheaper oh, than in uh, South Africa. Definitely, very cheap. And yeah. you, can, You'd be you can buy a whole setup from Amazon. Exactly. I mean, we were buying knives and stuff from Amazon because yeah. like, we're always looking for chef equipment and stuff that's this so convenient. This is the restaurant now. Yeah, the restaurant. Like, even personally, like I was looking for a whetstone, I was looking for a new knife. And it's so much cheaper. I mean, uh, I just moved yesterday. So, yeah. like, looking oh, for yes, new appliances me. and stuff. It's so much cheaper and so convenient. I had a full microwave kettle and uh, toaster set delivered to my door. Yeah, and look I wouldn't at that. have normally had that at exactly. home. I mean, I think Take A Lot is trying to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, where they have everything, but they still don't have as much variety. Yeah, you're still lacking um, in that department. Compared to Amazon, we're yeah. so lucky when when it comes to that. So yeah. that's like the those differences, I guess. Like some parts are really nice, and some parts are lacking. Oh, in definitely. A way. Yeah. Even, even with the public transport, I mean. We wouldn't be able to move around as freely in South Africa compared to here. No, because, yeah, that's true. I On mean, your the, own too, in that way. The freedom of taking a bus at any point uh, along your route. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the convenience of it, of them being on time. Exactly. Majority of the time. I take that for granted, yeah. For yeah, me now, for I'm using the tubes so often. If that train is like a minute or two minutes late, I'm already complaining. Yeah, yeah. But... I never had that before, but you get so used to it being on time, and all of a sudden, it's not on time. Not right? on time, yeah. Where is the train? But we, I don't think that would work back at home. Like, we're so no. reliant on our I cars. wanted to uh, to try some way for it to work, because it'll be a nice system for everyone to be able to move about their own area in that way, definitely, you know? Definitely, definitely. More um, walking. I used the cow train, I think, once or twice in yeah. Johannesburg. Not once or twice. I used the cow train when I was in, when I was in Johannesburg. Yeah, how was that? Um... It was a really nice experience, but then 
the problem came when uh, you get to the station, then you have to Uber to wherever you want to be. Oh, okay, Or you can okay. take the shuttle, but the shuttle is not very uh, convenient because it drops you off in odd places. Yeah, right, right. Um, yeah, and the, the pricing wise, it's about the same price as you would pay here. Really? Uh, I Obviously mean, it's like, not I think a ride was like what sixty seven rand or so, or I could be wrong. Um, uh, train ticket. Train ticket, yeah, yeah. train ticket. Um, and also here you don't have to have a ticket. You don't have to have the Oyster card. Yeah, you, you can, can use your normal yeah, you credit card or your your debit card. Yeah, I use the um, tap all the time. I rather tap that. even. I think uh, back at home, it doesn't work that easy. Like the how train, you can take it from point A if you want to go to Rhodesfield or you want to go to Ortambo. Um, but it's not as free as compared to our train or tube station here. Oh, okay, like, so it's more accessible. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, lot of differences. But the adjustment, although difficult, also makes you feel like, I never thought I'd be able to come to a place like this and yet I'm here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives you that sense of accomplishment in a way. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You've made it out of your hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even yeah. even for like a you know, a, sh- a few like short years. But the fact that you were able to make that uh, that leap, like we said before. It's not easy at it's all. Not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Starting from a fresh start. Definitely from not scratch. for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Definitely. But also like not a lot of people don't like to do something like this. But those of uh, them that, you know, maybe listening now and thinking of quitting their jobs and starting off something different, something that they always wanted to do. For me, personally, I don't think it's too late. It's not. I feel like if you want to, you always wanted to do something, maybe somewhere along the line, uh, situations in life forced you to take a certain direction that you didn't really like being in. But now, if you want to make the change, then by all means, I think you should make the change. Mm, Definitely. Now, when you're saying like age-wise, I think about my parents, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've left them back in South Africa. They're close to retirement, basically, now. Okay. okay. So, my mom is a teacher. She still has maybe about 10 years of teaching left. Uh, my dad is a semi-retired. Okay, right. Um, and I think uh, mom has looked at the opportunities of going overseas because as a teacher, you can travel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and always she always thinks about the, how comfortable, how comfortable she is at home. Mm. And if she had to go up and move... That's always something that holds them back. That's true, yeah. It, uh, it's not easy, yeah. Yeah, I think we, we're very complacent back at home and we're always sitting. But I say, I think now uh, that I'm here in London, if she had to apply for a job to come here, it would be so much easier because she would have me to support her. And yeah. She would have that The adjustment would be that easier. Adjustment, that adjustment would be so much easier. That's true. And there's so many South Africans also living here. There's a in, lot, yeah. In, in, especially in, in schools. Especially in schools mm. and especially in like... Uh, in London itself, yeah. I think compared to the rest of the UK, in London is yeah. more concentrated with the South Africans. I think South I saw Africans. a thing that said there's about 280,000 South Africans in the UK. Sure. That's, that's a, a large lot. amount. That's <laughs> a very big amount. Yeah, it's a large amount. Yeah. Are those 200 and something voting this year? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, don't wonder. even think I'm going to be voting. <laughs> I don't think so either. We don't really know when to register. I, they say I you, there's a link that people were putting up. You can register online. Oh, okay. And then you can go to the embassy to vote here in, in London. Although I know all those things... I have my own view with voting and things yeah. like that. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll cross that bridge <laughs> when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's nice, obviously, to talk about. I, the motivation part of talking about these things is, like, my, I'll say my favorite part. Yeah. Because I always want to see uh, what makes a person tick um, who they are, what made them make that decision. Like, it's a difficult decision, but what made you make the decision? Like, it's you know you're there now in step one. You want to go to step ten. Do you really see yourself getting there? You're going to quit halfway because a lot of people go to step 10. Yeah. It's a lot of challenges, even for me, for, uh, for myself and us. I know it's a lot, but I, I won't forgive myself if I don't do it. Yeah, that's true. The, for me, the power of regret is much stronger than me saying, uh, I'm okay, I'm comfortable, yeah, let me just stay here. Yeah, I can't do it. That's true. That's very true. Um, I tell you a funny story. Mm. Um, before I could come to London, I didn't really tell my uh, girlfriend at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really tell her that yeah. I was applying for the job. Oh, and, okay. Uh, my visa was already applied for and I it was a week before I could get it. <laughs> that I decided to tell her, oh, look, I'm going to London. <laughs> and I look back now and I think to myself, I was actually very stupid and very immature <laughs> when I did that because um, 
she was my support and she was so angry with me because she said I w- did you think I was going to hold you back oh, from doing okay, that okay, do, you, right. do you think I would be so stupid to hold you back and say that you can't go um and it was a conversation that we had always had when we were dating you know uh the plan was to go overseas okay. and start off. You know, there's no... We didn't see vision of being in South Africa for a very long right. time. But now that I am here, I think my vision has changed and uh, the plan has changed kind of like, I want to go back home. I want to... Because I want to go back home and start off again because I see value. I see a, a place where I can start off there. That's true. Um, Same with me. Can we, uh, me as one person, as a small one person, mm. I can make it at least a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And whatever you're doing and the, the things that you're involved in. Yeah, because South Africans throughout the world are doing great things. That's true. That's what I noticed We're getting now. noticed. You're doing the always. podcast now. I'm just meeting all these amazing people that are doing so much in the world. Definitely. And, you know, providing all this value out there within their, what they do in their daily lives or whether they're doing it online. But it's nice to kind of be a part of it in a small 1% kind of way. Definitely. To know that, uh, yeah, I can also... I never saw myself uh, being uh, on this type of stage, trying to ha- add value to people's lives, speaking to them. But I am here now and actually do like it a lot. Mm. You know? So it's, uh, it's nice to take that leap. I feel you'll never know until you try it. You never know until you try, yeah. Yeah. You can't also predict things before they happen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to touch the fire to get burnt, you know? That's true. That's, uh, with making mistakes, how uh, how are you in terms of making mistakes? Are you okay making mistakes or you hate it or what's the deal? I prefer not to make any yeah. mistakes. <laughs> I do end up making a lot of mistakes. Uh, but I learn from them. I think that's the important part. Exactly. There's always something to learn from it and to take away from it. Yeah. yeah to make true. yourself better personally. And there's, you never know who else might be watching and also learn from it, you know. Uh, I'm sure there's other people watching your life. You yeah. Know, for example, <laughs> will say, oh, okay, he did this and he made that mistake. So yeah. I won't do it or I'll do this I'll do it this too. way. Exactly, yeah. So and don't take it as, as if it's a bad thing that they're laughing at your mistake or they're yeah. treating it as if oh, you've done something stupid. Take it as you've inspired them. Exactly. Because they, they are making a move now. Yeah. Uh, I, t- I tend to think that it's a happy mistake and everything happens for a reason. True. I think that's kind of like my mantra. Yeah. Um, everything happens for a reason. There's a time and place for everything. That's true. Yeah, yeah, wherever you are, wherever you are in life now yeah. is where you're supposed to be. Yeah, that's true. That's what I always heard. And it kind of makes sense. Like, no matter what you feel, like last week, you could have had this uh, particular job or you could have been in this place. But where you are now is where you're supposed to be. Because you've made every every step you've taken, every decision you've made led you down that path. Yeah. And if you want to change it now from where you are now, you've got a platform of whatever you've created for yourself and you can make that change. That's, that's you know? so true. That's so that's true. That's how I look at how I look at life in the larger scheme of things, I guess. So what's uh, so what's next for you? How do you, where do you see yourself? Let's say your five year plan. Well, five year plan. Uh, um, I think for now, I'm wanting to just gain as much as of experience as I can. It's very difficult. I'm very happy where where I am right now. Uh, I don't think I'll get to the point where I'm complacent and I'm not learning something uh, or I'm not teaching Again, something. Again, you're in a different country too. Yeah, you know? you're in a different country and in London. Uh, I think within the next five years and when it does, you know, when it does come along, I'm, I must, I'll get the right signs, I guess, to take it. Definitely. Um, I want to just build up myself for this next five years, get as much experience in as I can. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to be working for someone else for the rest of my life. Uh I do see myself owning my own business That's very soon in the, in the soon, in the near future rather. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to get my book out there, um, boost my social media, hopefully. And uh, so you right now you're in the growing phase. Yeah, I'm in the growing phase. That's in cool. The teething, in That's the teething nice. phase. Yeah. You know, make all the mistakes now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, learn the most now so that you can get to that stage where you can actually be okay. I actually know my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's one one guy I know from. Uh, he has this book, uh, I don't think it's like uh, to be a millionaire in, in a week and in 48 hours, whatever it is. He says, uh, the more mistakes, the sooner, the better it is. Yeah. Get them all out the way. He said, in fact, he, he does the thing, like, you know, we look at success rate. He looks at his, at his failure, failure rate. rate. He wants to fail faster, quickly. So he knows all those mistakes are done. He's learned from it and he's moved on. So yeah. that yeah. makes all the sense, I guess. 
start from the bottom and keep building up. Keep building. Now it's the time for me to build up. I can see myself building in that five years. Yeah. Um, who knows? Maybe apply to to remain in, remain in the UK. If it's uh, lucrative, I mean, yeah. if not, go back home and start afresh. Start which afresh is uh, which is a possibility too. This is also a possibility because I'm not shutting down. I yeah. Mean, I definitely, now that I've been here, I mean, there's other countries to go to. The Europe is exactly right around yeah, When you're right, right, right around there, you know yeah. that there's so many opportunities. There's so many opportunities. And I've done it now once yeah. to come here. So now I know in future I can do it again. Exactly. I mean, if... Singapore calls, I know I can't go. <laughs> it's kind of one of those situations. Yeah. And I think my job is also one that's around the world. That's the best part, I guess. Part, huh? Any part of it. You, you needed um, the right thing. Yeah, before starting a family, just get all of the experience in. That's true. And then you know, UK, I can focus on myself now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is the time where I take all of the knowledge I've learned and put it towards myself, my business, uh, my my brand as its as its own thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. The brand, brand is, brand, mm. yeah, yeah. Because always talk about personal brands too, and uh, you you're currently building yours now. You you actually have, you gave yourself a good start, but being on the TV shows yeah. that you've been on those competitions, you cemented yourself in this um, culinary uh, industry. People will know your name a lot more now yeah, than ever before, you know, because you put yourself in that 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 show didn't just go on the show you went quite far in the show you you, yeah. you were yeah. successful and uh, it's nice to see that uh, a brand being built in this way like, you and know purposefully i think my work itself will show will speak for itself you know my that's true it will show the kind of person that i am the kind of chef that i am uh, yeah it's not only about like my career in the end of the day it's also who i want who to you, be personally exactly um and as a family you know like i think about my wife now and i think about my future and i Think about how I would like our family to be Mm-mm. and how I'd like everything else to be around. So you're thinking about all that. Thinking all about all of those things. Yeah. You have to kind of like, because it's not on yourself. That's true. Uh, you can't be selfish, that selfish to think about yourself at the end of the day. You have to think about the other people who are that affected are by all of your choices in life as well. That's true, actually. Yeah. Because you don't make a decision that uh, affects you standing alone. It's everyone mm. else. Yeah. That's uh, holding on to, especially... Uh, you know, you have kids watching you and uh, that will watch you on TV before they'll know you now. That's true. So whatever That's you true. say, they're like, oh my God, yeah, you know, let's see whether we can emulate what he's done. So Not to go <laughs> so far, but like my nephew back at home, he's only three. Yeah. Uh, and he would love to watch Taste Master. But he didn't understand what was going on. Yeah, but I just mean, that three. sheer excitement of seeing me. Okay, oh, okay. This, my uncle is on TV. And he's seeing you there. And he would and say yeah. to his mom, no, I want to see uncle. I only want to watch it. She, she must pause the thing just so he can really, see Really? That's face. amazing. Um, and she showed me the one day I video called her to sh- so she could show me how he had made her pause yeah. the video just so she could see <laughs> my face. Um, and even after that, then he says he wanted a cooking set and uh, he wanted to be like... Wow. So now he has a full-on kitchen. Yeah. And he makes things for them. And then when you ask him, because his mom is also like she is into cooking and yeah. his grand and his grandparents, they're all into cooking. But when you ask him, uh, who do you cook like? He says, I cook like my uncle. So oh, okay. that's like, <laughs> for me, it's nice. it plays on my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Definitely like down. already you're making an impact I'm in his life. I'm already making an impact in his life, yeah, you know, true. and he's so young. So That's nice really, to see. It makes... Uh, Makes me feel like something I'm doing right. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It shows you like one of those uh, those signs, you know. Yeah, I've, I've done. I've chosen the right thing. Yeah, I've got I've got a good head start. Yeah. So those of you watching at home, uh, we haven't mentioned it clearly. Nolan was on um, Taste Master SA. Yeah. He went quite far there. So the show is still uh, you can still find it on YouTube. So you can go back and watch those episodes. Season four. Season four and the the types of food that he made and how he was judged and so on, uh, it was quite an interesting uh, one looking at it. All those types of uh, dishes that were made, it was like the, the varieties from the what variety, I saw. Variety, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, if you watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video so that Nolan here can inspire more young people to choose different career paths if uh, that's what they you know into instead of the more traditional sense. And if you're listening on Spotify and Apple, please, um, you can rate the show and it really does help the channel uh, more than yours. And I will definitely see you in the next episode. Thanks so much, Uh, Dean.